Um, just regarding morality, issues of morality. Most people on earth and in the spirit world on spiritual paths do not understand how important morality is in terms of spiritual progression. And this is why all through religious history there has been channelings from the spirit world about you must do this and you must not do that. And the reason why these things like the Ten Commandments, for example, were stated in the Bible is because there are certain parts of those commandments that have a relationship to issues of morality. And the majority of people on earth generally ignore issues of morality. And what I've found is in the New Age spiritual movement, there's often a, a, a very strong emphasis on not worrying about morality at all. And in fact, you know, having every sexual experience you possibly can and every, you know, all of these different experiences without concern for what's actually happening at the soul level to the soul. And so that's a very important thing to bear in mind in your progression towards God is that in the end, we do have to learn issues of morality. Now, you'll notice that when it comes to sex between partners, if there's love involved, I have a very permissive attitude. But when it comes to sex between multiple partners, or one, one person after another, I have a very, uh, I suppose you could say, firm attitude towards that, because I know how much the soul degrades during those kind of things. And there are literally millions and millions, in fact billions of spirits in the hells of the first fear who are there because of their sexual conduct while they are on earth. Right? So it's very, very important to understand that the majority of those people in those places are people who have a lot of trouble getting out of those places. In the Paget messages, there was a message from Helen, who was um, Mr. Paget's wife, who passed into the spirit world. And James Paget asked Helen, what was the hardest emotional injuries to get over? And she began talking about ones who had murdered and ones who had done the other things. But then she said the hardest person, the hardest person to help was the person she called the prostitute. And then, he said, and then she clarified that, saying she wasn't talking about people who were prostitutes while they were on earth. What she was talking about is people who use their sexual desires on earth in a very open and permissive way and prostituted their bodies right, in order to get feelings. And she described that that condition was the hardest condition to help in the spirit world. And in fact, it's also the hardest condition of a person to help here in many times too, because we can become, you know, we come so we know that sex is good, right? So then we go down the track of actually saying, well, sex with anyone is good, therefore sex with all people is good, and we just take that down into the extreme and then practice that, not understanding how many addictions we're covering over while we're doing that. So it's very, very important if you want to progress on any spiritual path to understand the relationship between sex, the addictions, and spiritual development and so it's very important that you grasp even at least intellectually that when you go along with your sexual desires without understanding them and without acting in harmony with love what actually happens is your soul condition does degrade and because it's such a pleasurable experience it's very very easy to get addicted to it and also, it's a very socially now becoming socially acceptable experience. So more and more, that we're becoming an open society, which is a very good thing when it comes to sexuality. But if we then use that as an excuse for permissiveness, what's going to happen is our soul condition will degrade. And so this is where we need to see the relationship between sex and our desires and our addictions and, and how we often operate in our addictions rather than in love. And remember, sex with love is obviously a lot different, but how do you tell you're being loving? It's very hard sometimes, isn't it? Because all you have is this burning need sometimes to just to be touched, <coughs> or a burning need to be you know, held or cuddled, or a burning need to interact with a person on an emotional level, which we often then misplace with sex, and think that getting, having sex with somebody will actually give us that. 
and the majority of times we come away from those relationships or those one night stands or those different sexual acts that we do very, very disappointed. And the reason why is because we're often substituting <coughs> sex for what the real thing we're looking for is, which is often affection, love, unconditional love, unconditional acceptance and a lot of other things. And we're often substituting sex for that. Does that make sense to everyone? So less yesterday when we had that conversation, what happened is that there were, I don't know if you felt it, but there was a real uh, feeling of anger in fact uh, for, for many in the audience, of, of, of feeling judged about their own sexual practices. And I'm not judging anyone's sexual practices, I'm just saying that while we engage in sexual practices that are unloving, what actually happens is our soul degrades. And we need to be aware that that's the case. And that's why we mention things like sexually deviant behaviour, sexual enslavement, sexual denial of self, sexual addictions, unloving sexual practices to obtain arousal and all those kinds of things. That's why we've mentioned them. Because they are all things that actually degrade the soul condition. And I'm not saying deny them. I'm saying totally see where, what we're doing. So, you know, if we're into pornography, yes, I'm into pornography. Why am I into pornography? Go deeper into that emotionally. But, and, and then, if, you know, if you're into threesomes, you know, look at that seriously. What's going on with that? Why do you need three people to have sex with rather than two, just the two of you? What's going on there? What's going on emotionally? If you're into orgies, what's going on emotionally there? What, what is being attracted there? Because all of those situations also attract lots of spirits in the same condition to those events. And many times we get highly aroused, not because those situations are actually arousing to us, but because spirits are often interfering with our arousal process through those interactions. And so we need to be very careful, if we want to maintain our soul condition, we need to be very careful what we choose. So and, uh, recognize the desire, let yourself feel even the desires that you have, let yourself even imagine them through fantasies and all those kind of things, but then go deeper into the emotion. What emotion is driving this? You know, allow yourself to feel the underlying emotion. Is that, everyone follows that? Let yourself do that. And there were quite a number in the audience yesterday who felt quite a large amount of judgment about that. So for those of, you, of them who are not here today, and hopefully they might see this session and, and uh, understand that I'm not judging them for their actions, but rather saying go deeper into the emotion if those things are prevalent. 